Well, I'd like to thank everyone that came out and your comments, and I know a lot of people, like Mr. Bauer said, has got up and left. Um, I, too, was educated in Augusta County Schools. I won't say how many years ago that was, but it's been a few. I came through there when our teachers was teaching 31, 32 kids. And they was able to do a lot more then because they didn't have the mandates and requirements that the state and federal has put on. And it's a continual thing. It's not only in education. We see it in our fire and rescue. Government keeps growing, getting bigger, but it's not for the best. So I don't know what the answer is, but I don't know how many, and I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, whether you're for or against, but when our leaders that goes to Richmond has their community meetings, everybody needs to get out and go and let them know what we stand for, what we want them to go down and stand for here. And I know, and I think that they try. But we're in a rural area, and when you're working against metropolitan areas like Northern Virginia and Eastern Virginia, we get outnumbered a lot of times. So I don't know what the answer is there, but we just have to keep trying and do what we can do. Um, so we don't have the facts and figures before us. Um, Richmond may come out with some better figures, but I kind of doubt it. So we'll have to look at what we've got and see where we can go. And I would like to commend all the teachers and that's in this county. I think we still have good educational system here. Um, we, we have a lot of problems and a couple things that were mentioned tonight. I think two of our big problems was prayer and Bible reading in school and discipline. You don't have the discipline there. The parents are not disciplined. The discipline was took away from teachers. And Lord only knows I got my share of whippings when I was in school. <laughs> and it didn't hurt me one bit. Well, <laughs> I, I think some of them did. But, you know, you have to train kids discipline and I think a lot of our society now when they get out of school they're not brought up under discipline they're not trained discipline and so it shows when they get in society and I know we're not going to fix everything overnight uh, it's took almost 50 years to get in the situation we are and we're not going to come out of it overnight but we will try to work with what we've got and do the best we can. I want to thank you. Like everybody else up here, uh, we got ele elected listening to the citizens and campaigning that we were going to represent their interests. I went door to door in my county, in my district, knocked on doors, and talked to a lot of people. Listen to a lot of the comments that have come here tonight. What I have to say, not everybody's going to agree with, but that's something we accept when we take this job. But we didn't run for these seats to make everybody happy. I have two children in the public school system. I'm getting a first-hand education as a parent of the quality of education going on in Augusta County. Before I begin, I have to admit that the teachers that my children have had have been exceptional. They've been caring. They've been dedicated, they've been knowledgeable. You can tell that they didn't choose to go into the profession for a paycheck. They went into it because it was either a calling or a belief for them that they held. And I believe that there are serious, serious problems with public schools. The SOLs I have gotten an education about from my children bringing home paperwork. My daughter brought home piece of paper, I don't have it with me, I wish I did, and science on one hand and social studies on the other. It was a grid. It said Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. One, two, three, four, five. 
and each one was an SOL block. The question said, who, was the, who of the below was an important woman for women's rights? And I'm quizzing my daughter, and I said, which one is it? And I read her the name. She said, the answer is C. C was Susan B. Anthony. I said, what did you learn about Susan B. Anthony in school today? Oh, well, just, just that she was, you know, important for women's rights. Well, what did she do? Well, we didn't cover that. When's the quiz? Tomorrow. I feel horrible for the teachers. I'm sure they didn't go to school to teach a block worksheet so that children can sit down and answer questions on an SOL test so that the scores come back well. I become increasingly frustrated when I hear about these sinking SOL scores that, oh, that's all right, that's all right. It's the first year that we had those scores. And I'm talking about mathematics. I don't know if anybody saw those scores, but they plummeted, especially in third grade. So the reason for that is a new test. We will adjust the system so that we will answer those questions better. They require more critical thinking. It's, you, can't click, you can't pick A, B, or C, or D. You have to fill in the blank. It should have been a huge wake-up call. And we've got a major problem. We're teaching our kids to answer a test, and we're not teaching them to think. We're not teaching them facts. <laughs> My wife and I are blessed that we have the resources to provide tutoring. So we are supplementing our children's public school education with tutoring on Saturday mornings because we believe in our children's education. I don't fault our local school system for this. I don't fault our superintendent. He is a very good man. I trust in what he's doing. I don't fault the teachers that I speak to because I go to every single one of their conferences. I fault a system that has been taken over by so-called experts. I think this runs to the heart of what we're talking about. The second problem we have, and I very much appreciate the lady from uh, my neighborhood for speaking, because we have a serious discipline problem in our schools. You cannot expect children to be successful members of society by just sending them to public school for 12 years and as somebody told me, expecting after they come back, after they graduated from high school, that they're going to be well-rounded, fully mature <coughs> adults, ready to enter society, and parents didn't have to do anything. I don't care how much money you think, it's not enough to take the place of a good parent at home, and you'll never be able to supplement enough money to take the place of that. I hope, this is a message to our school board, they don't come back with the thought of closing the governor's school again. The governor's school is a gem in the valley. We use that, and we talk to potential businesses coming out here, and people really recognize that. We have a lot of very well-educated kids that go through there. Not to say that we don't have well-educated kids that go to our other schools. But that is an exceptional program that should be maintained. It is not a huge expense. I would rather see sports programs cut before we lost the governor's school. I agree with a lot of what Dr. Patty has said here this evening. School population is going down. Bricks and mortar schools need to become secondary. I agree with the public comment that control of our public schools needs to be returned to the local boards in terms of the school boards. I very much agree with that. The federal government and the state government have had their fingers in it for way too long. In terms of taxes, last year we funded $3 million to the schools in additional revenue. 
to make up for the composite index, which I know many people may not understand. It took me almost six months to understand what the heck that thing was and how it worked, and it's awful. However, we have consistently, from, since 2005, increased the overall percentage of the budget. Revenues that come into the county in general, the percentage of those that have gone into public schools have increased steadily. It went from 42% of every revenue dollar that we got to what last year was 46%. And I agree very much with what Mr. Pyle said, that if you put another 2.5 million in it, what are the results we're gonna get? I'm very much not in the ha appetite to raise taxes. We do have a reassessment coming up. We are going to see some different numbers. I'm on the reassessment committee, along with Mr. Wills, and they're not pretty. We don't influence those values, but we sure hurry about what they're looking like. We are going to have an adjustment. I think the last thing the people of Augusta County need this year is to be hit with a tax increase, only for us to come back next year and hit them again.